The International Growth Center is a network of leading academics, researchers, and economists throughout the world, and our goal is to connect research to policy. People like me, who are professional economists in government, most of the time we're trying to translate existing theory into something which is practical in terms of policy, which is limited actually by my state of knowledge. You know, the amount of time a person like me would get to keep up with the literature is limited. I continue to learn from the younger people who keep in touch with the uh, unfolding area of new knowledge, new research, which otherwise I would not have access to. It is necessary that uh, those who work in the government and those who deal particularly with policies uh, have a continuous interface with the knowledge production that keeps them up to date and also uh, helps them correct uh, the mistake that they could otherwise make. The opportunity to sort of isolate and focus on a set of topics by talking to broader civil society as well as policy makers and then getting the best minds in the world, anywhere in the world, to come together to discuss what they have to share about those topics and also sort of sponsor new research and then disseminate all of that. So there are some research programs and outputs where you know we design the research, we conduct it, and then we communicate that to policymakers. And that's typically not as effective as if you design the research program in collaboration with policymakers to begin with. Now it turns out that dietary sources, according to the literature, are an important source of arsenic in ingestion. We're interested in understanding the economic and productivity consequences of the largest poisoning of a population in the world, which is the arsenic that has been obtained in wells in Bangladesh. Mark's paper found that, that arsenic does not only affect all levels of society, but regardless of your income bracket. And so this is a very democratic issue, something that affects everyone, and something that should be brought, brought to the attention of policymakers. We've had the opportunity to present the results in a way that speaks to, to policy. In this case, it was, this is how much Bangladesh is losing per person from this arsenic infection. Okay, it turns out to be about $1,000 per person over that person's lifetime. So it informs a policymaker, if you've got a way of producing arsenic that costs less than that, right? You're going to have a high return in terms of uh, growth and um, in, and incomes in, in Bangladesh. So there's policy relevance. We had the minister of finance here, and we had people who work in his office here listening to this. And since even just my talk, which was a few minutes ago, I've talked with a number of people who seem to have some some influence who become interested. So that's the way it it, it seems to work. Sure, let me talk about the research I'm actually going to present at the conference uh, today. So I've been working together with uh, Michael Greenstone and Esther Duflo and Nick Ryan from MIT on a multi-year project that tries to uh, understand ways of strengthening environmental regulation. So we've been working with the State Pollution Control Board in India that was concerned about how to ensure sufficient monitoring of uh, polluting firms in order to uh, see whether or not they were compliant with regulations. The very simple policy lessons that come out of uh, some of the papers. So one pretty remarkable one is uh, not even a policy lesson, but just a fact that the median farm size in South Asia is about about an acre. What people in the Western world that has large-scale agriculture would just think of as a backyard, right? And therefore, farming is very inefficient here. There's not much use of capital. Right? Before partition, this is the same country. So we come across the same issues, and right now uh, my country is facing three major issues. One is the militancy, the other one is the floods, which has affected us, and the third one is the earthquake. And economic growth is, I think, going to be central uh, to the way a lot of other social and political problems are going to uh, be influenced. So I mean, it's the whole gamut of issues that you saw today, uh, agriculture, land, uh, trade and industry, and then social sector, health and education. So you've just covered the, the, really the entire gamut here. As I said, the commonalities are becoming more and more evident. I think a lot of the things that are being said at the country level are resonating in the other two countries, Pakistan and India. And I think that's, that's what 
uh, this conference, and that's why this conference is so important. Now, given that we had people from three different countries, as well as the uh, research policy interaction, which is kind of part of the IGC hallmark now, so we had a bit of both, which was really unusual. I said Bangladesh has been a, a student of academics in making policy. When the country first came into existence, this sovereign country, we held an international uh, economics conference. The government adopted a number of their advice. So the tradition of taking advice from the uh, academics in Bangladesh was established in 1972. So it is in the same tradition. And I find today a repeat of that 1972 event, you see. This is the holy grail, which is, you want to do research not just for its own sake, but you want the research to have an impact.